this shit, Tucker. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mod Bros. On today's video, we have finally gotten ourselves an Aeon Pro. So, it seems like, for whatever reason, all the local Walmarts in our area are like incredibly slow at both getting and then stocking the shelves with blasters and like we tried to do the thing of just like hey uh do you guys have any of these in the back and they immediately just hit us with the oh i don't know let me go look and then they never come back so our walmarts are kind of lame but now finally a little bit later than everyone else we have an aon pro to talk about today's video we're going to be giving our doing a review of the aon pro that we've recently got and then doing a comparison to the retaliator platform which i mean if you can't tell they're pretty similar I am definitely on side Team Retaliator, but we'll get to that later. So for the Aeon Pro, it's your standard pistol size, slide prime, mag fed blaster. It's honestly a little bit more bulkier than I had expected it to be. If we line it up handle to handle with a Retaliator, it's a bit taller and just ever so slightly wider. Uh, the handle, the, sl the handle is pretty comfortable. It's exactly like the Nexus Pro, so I mean, wouldn't be surprised if you could just swap this on the other one. Feels good in the hand. It's not, it's not outstanding. It's not bad. It's just yeah, it's good. Trigger pull is nice and smooth. There is a little bit of slack in it, but then you get to the hard wall. And it's a pretty crisp, crisp release. Uh, there's no stock attachment point. We both of us are kind of <laughs> disappointed at what they did with the back here, just making it like basically flat. Doesn't really look the best, but we understand that for their internals there wasn't anything that they needed to do and they weren't going to put a stock on it they couldn't put an end strike attachment on it they i feel like they definitely could have adventure force has a stock attachment thing for a few of the other boxers so i definitely think they could have done something with that but i understand not uh the magwell is your standard magwell that works well it actually works with 18s now that have a little nub on them we don't have i don't have any here oh we do have some but yes, they fit in without any issue and they actually hold in well. They're not going to fall out until you release the mag. So that's nice. This thing will feed full length starts because it has a telescoping sort of breach to it. You can see there sort of telescopes in to allow you to feed full lengths, which is pretty cool. Also feeding half lengths with a pusher setup. Right here is a little handle for you to rest your hand when you are using the blaster i definitely like it i am currently still trying to decide if i like holding it with both hands here or both hands on the firing grip like a pistol i don't know they're both really comfortable to do it's just sort of iffy on which one i like more the slide is actually very nicely designed i know some people will add a little group hook onto the back to allow easier priming but honestly the springs the spring is not that heavy i would say like maybe heavier than a stock chronos but this slide is so much easier to hold than a chronos slide uh i i, I mean people are already putting pumps on this i'll probably see people making a pull handle i might even do that myself depending on what i plan on doing to this and then it has a pusher breach which the dart gate is actually what seals into the pusher and seals to the dart it's a very tight fit in the dart gate and then the barrel itself is a metal barrel just like on the nexus where it's a little bit loose but has just enough friction to where it's still a decent barrel it's pretty short it's only about that long which i mean gosh like i like that they were trying to keep this as compact as possible but that's short of a barrel this thing's kind of loud when it fires and that's probably just because the plunder tube is so much bigger <laughs> than the barrel that when you fire it you can hear that little pop of just the extra air leaving after the dart has already fired. But it definitely delivers the hits even with that short of a barrel. With their half length darts, we were getting about 150 on the chronograph. And then with those full length darts that I just fired, the full length FEJ, we're getting about 130, which is nice. So you can run in, grab some full length darts, use this at a full length war, and then also grab some half length and run this as a half length war. I'm currently in a conundrum where I don't know if I want to try and max it out and see how hard I can get it hit or if I want to despring it so I can use it at our 100 FPS wars at nerfed. So 
and Pro came with just the half length adapter. Uh, as we know before, this is their wildcard adapter that has the dual detents so that you can run their mags, katanas, talons, whatever you really want. I don't like this as much as a katana adapter because it has both and I just run katanas. But for people who run talons, this is a pretty nice one because it actually has a lever release. Uh, additionally, one thing that I would recommend users do is I'll show you with my katana mag. What I've done with this is I've just cut out the sides, which allows you when the breech is closed and you have the adapter in, it allows you to easily insert and remove your mag. And you don't have to do like a skinny push or anything and reduce your airflow. It's just that with the adapters, the walls on the sides here prevent the, the mag lips from expanding over the breech when you're trying to pull it out when the breech is closed. So if you just trim it a little bit, then you're able to remove your mag, no issues. So even when the breech is closed, you can remove the mag and you don't have to open the breech to do any of that. Uh, as first impressions, I think it's a great blaster. 20, $25 at Walmart for that is an outstanding. Like before when someone was like, hey, what's a good simple blaster that I can get to play with my buddies who mod? It was like, oh, well, you can't really get much. You can order a blaster online and have it pre-built, but that might take them time. And then it also is a little expensive, whereas this, $25 at Walmart, you can go and pick this up within 30 minutes, more than likely, and be able to actively compete with people who play in a 100 FPS war. That's insane for the modding community. Like, people always say these are for modders. I don't necessarily exactly say they're for modders. I say they are for uh, new nerfers who have friends who are modders because there's not really much that you can do mod wise for these like it doesn't take as much effort uh, a la Nexus Pro shove a new spring and new brass barrel and then you're done basically <laughs> whereas this had to do a lot of work so now that we have this here you can sort of do a direct comparison I personally like the handle on the retaliator better it's a little bit smaller and the finger grooves are nicer and it fits really well in my hand so I like that Additionally, stock attachment point, much better than this, not having one for those who want it. It's always good to have options that are there for people who want them, and then if you don't want to, you don't have to run a stock. I will occasionally throw a stock on this if I'm playing in like an outdoor war, but if I'm playing inside, indoors, I definitely like the feel of a pistol better. Also, another pro for a retaliator is quick change springs. Not exactly with like stock retaliators, even though you don't have to fully take apart a stock retaliator to change out the spring, whereas this, you kind of do, and it's a little bit of a pain, but I have yet to open this up, so I can't exactly say how much of a pain it is. It looks to be fairly simple, but it's just a hassle if you are trying to get just like right to an FPS limit, like just under an FPS limit, and you keep having to change your springs and fiddle with your seals to try and get just there. Having to take out all the screws is a pain, in my opinion. Additionally, retaliators, barrel attachments, those are dope. This doesn't have any, but I mean, it's, it's Dart Adventure Force, so they don't really have any of those. Uh, the slide on the Retaliators, I will say, is not as good as this in stock form because it is just like a rectangle that you put your hand onto. As you can see, I had to add both reinforcements and then a support piece for my hand. Whereas this, I don't think I'll have to really do much. I haven't looked too much at how it connects to the breech and how strong that is. So. I fear that that might break because from the pictures that I've seen, it looks like this is essentially your bolt sled. So this sort of works like just a larger sharp fire. <laughs> this is essentially, yeah, now that I think of it, this is a, the AM Pro is essentially a sharp fire or a spamp, but bigger. And it will feed full lengths. And it's $25. And it hits 150 And this will definitely hit harder than a spamp cam. Can confirm. Like, spamp plunger tube aeon plunger tube <laughs> um but yeah that's about it also with the box in your aeon pro you're gonna get this which has i just left mine in the packaging because it comes with your phobe your barrel attachment and then or your muzzle device and then your two spare o-rings that's really nice of dart uh dart zone to throw in extra o-rings i don't know necessarily what people would be doing to need to replace the o the o rings, but that's good that you they have them. That's nice that you don't have to go to the hardware store and get them. Uh, but also the muzzle device, eh, in my opinion, looks kind of doo doo, so I left it off for this. Uh, 
and since I also plan on changing the barrel, I will more than likely not need it. One thing that I did like to say though, is I brought my Zero from one of my Cetas here because it happens to fit very well into the front. And I think that looks much better. It doesn't fit perfectly because there's a little bit of a gap to where the barrel is. So if I push it in all the way, you don't get the full lettering, but then that'll actually be what you need. And I don't know, I have yet to crony that, but I guess since I have the chronograph here, I uh, may as well see. And just to give you guys some more numbers, at 150 FPS with their darts, I wouldn't really say that you would need a scar, but it definitely does help. And it should reduce the FPS. So actually I might be able to just get away with running the blaster like this at our our uh, 100, F, 100 FPS wars, which <laughs> I think would be fairly hilarious to show up with an Aeon Pro <laughs> like this and hit 150 FPS and just drop it down to 100 with the muzzle. Uh, this is a slightly sanded zero, so your results may vary. Error. Duh. Keep getting a bunch of misreads. All right, guys. So stock A stock Aeon Pro. I just have the Jet Zero barrel thrown in the front, pushing it as far as I can to get it down nice and tight to the barrel. So now that I have a little bit of rifling, that should drop my FPS slightly down, so that I can run this in a hundred FPS war. But. <laughs> Evidently, I seem to be getting higher numbers because I'm hitting now with, I'm getting like results in the 170s, which for one definitely shows that they made a mistake with the barrel length on it. Let me see if I can find some full lengths. Where, oh, where? Where is the full length start? Because these were hitting like 130s earlier, but now that I've added the zero, I'm getting higher numbers. 105, that's not bad. That's pretty good actually. And an 87, shoot, I may be able to just use this. Straight up out of the box with the Jet Zero on, on the end, firing full length FVJs, getting 105 and then 87. Now, that is a bit of a spread, and the darts at Nerfed are pretty low quality just because they are trashed and used for hours on end. So, if I'm getting a bit of a spread here with like fresh darts, having poor darts there are just gonna increase my variety and my FPS, which is not what you want, not what you want when you're at a war. But, that was, another 89 so that's hitting right right where we kind of want to be hitting for our wars at nerf just under 100 around 90 ish and that's with feeding full lengths a very light prime with the zero added on the end shoot dang dart zone look at what you guys did you guys did some good stuff <laughs> so um yeah <laughs> let me know down in the comment section if you guys think i should try and take the Aeon Pro to its max and get it hitting as hard as I can or do you think I should just leave it how it is right now and just use it as a 100 FPS day play type blaster but yeah guys hope you liked my opinions on the Aeon Pro definitely check it out if you are a fan of top prime blasters or if you are someone who's trying to get into the modding scene and wants a little bit of a higher FPS blaster that you can play with this one will definitely maybe get you started on playing at a higher level but yeah you gotta have a good one all right bye